Welcome back. Today we're going to tie the multi cam version of the Pat's Rubber Leg Stonefly. This is, it, if you look in just about any guide's fly box out here in the West, you're going to see a Pat's Rubber Legs. Um, it, it's just such a simple pattern to tie. It can be done in five to ten minutes, depending on how much detail you want to put into it. Um, and it catches fish. It does. Um, there are definitely stone flies out there that will look a lot more realistic, but they really don't catch any more fish than, than what this one does. It, it's, it's a really good pattern to have, um, especially, you know, like early spring going into summer uh, when, when the Squallas, um, and then a little bit later in the year, you start getting your goldens and your and your salmon flies going. That's uh, that's definitely something to. This is definitely a fly to have in the box. So, and you're not going to be upset if you set up on a rock and bust it. So, this is like I said, a five minute fly. And it'll catch just as many fish as a 30 minute stone fly will. So, what I'm doing right here is I'm tying in the first set of rubber legs, and that's going to be the tail section. Um, I'm just going to have those set in right like that, and then I'm going to take and trim that front section off. If you want to, you could have manipulated those and folded them back and whatever. It's just, it's more of a hassle to do it. It's easier to just throw in a clean uh, set of rubber legs. So, I'm going to leave those setting as they are for now. I'll trim those up later. And now I'm going to take some variegated chenille. I'm going to pull this chenille off and expose that cotton. So that's all I'm tying in. And then set that right at my tie-in point for the tail. This is just a like tan and olive variegated chenille. This comes in like a bunch of different color combinations. Whatever, tie them in a bunch of different colors, different sizes, whatever it may be. Um, just have a you know a selection of stuff to go through, but it really doesn't matter. I don't I don't think it matters too much as to like the colors and everything that you're using. I don't know why I put that in the cradle. Force of habit, I guess. So now I'm just going to take a single rubber leg. And I'm going to tie this right on the top. This is a um, the hook that I'm using on this one. I forgot to mention that in the beginning is a uh, TMCO 200R. It's a hopper hook essentially. It's got a pretty pretty heavy gauge wire, but it's a 3x long. I mean, it, it's a good hook for this application. I I tend to go with this a decent amount. But it is on the smaller side, so this would be more like your squalas or your goldens. Some of your stones that you'll see out here, I mean, they're going to be up to two inches long. I mean, they're 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 massive nymphs. So I mean, at that point, you could go to like a four X um, size four, size two, whatever you want to. But um, this one, like I said, is on the smaller size, and on the smaller size, I only put two sets of rubber legs in. Um, if you want to, you can put you can put three in, um, but I typically only do that on the ones that I, where I'm trying to imitate a uh, a salmon or you know some of the bigger goldens that are out there. So I just throw those rubber legs in. I throw a couple of wraps back so that way it's keeping my rubber legs going consistent throughout. And then another thing that I don't do on these is I don't put antenna going forward. I don't put them going out, um, even on like my more realistic patterns. You see like the, the old Kaufman stones, they have... Knox, relax. Go lay down. I don't know what you're all worked up about. The old Kaufman stones, they had... They look really good, you know, on the vice and everything. But they had the goose biots going out um, of the front, and you know, I mean, it looks good. But realistically, when those when those stones are in the water, 
those front antenna wind up tucking toward the back um, and you really don't see them too much so I mean it's extra work for something that really doesn't make a good representation but the key to this pattern is motion with the rubber legs so if you want the rubber legs going to the front go ahead and tie them in I don't personally but uh, if, if that's what you want if you if what you're after is motion then by all means go ahead and do it but I'm gonna leave those out so now I'm just gonna take this variegated chenille and like I said I only have two now before I do that what I'm gonna do to make life a little bit easier on myself is grab a straw here I'm gonna pull all of those forward and just trap those with the straw if you want to you can keep the chenille on the card and use the rotary function but with those uh, with those rubber legs they tend to be a little bit difficult when you're using the rotary function so I'm going to just keep them out all together and then I'm going to go one wrap right on top of that first set of rubber legs and I'm gonna figure eight that once I get a figure eight I want one wrap right in front just to separate the two and then once I get that I'm just gonna give that a quick anchor right like so just to get everything nice and secure and then if you want to you can go back to the straw but I'm just gonna separate those with my hand and then back to the figure eight so one on the top one going right around the opposite direction and what that does is it it keeps your legs in the proper orientation and it also adds a little bit of bulk as you're going throughout this if you if you just run that all the way forward it's just going to be one size or one yeah one size essentially the entire way this gives you a little bit of bulk and then i'm going to open loop that and i'm going to go back over top of it to add just a little bit of extra to really feel that fly out and I'm not making one wrap right in front of the next on that section it's just kind of open looped spacing it out and everything but it does give it a little bit of extra security and it makes the fly look a little bit more filled out a little bit more bulky they can get pretty slender on you if you just use the uh, one wrap throughout the entirety so that gives you a little bit better of a profile right there and like I said if you want to go ahead and throw in that extra wrap or those extra um, rubber legs going out the front um, I typically don't like them set in that way um, also if you want to instead of putting these front ones on the top just the way the back are you can put one on each side and then you wind up with some legs kind of V'd out on the side it's all on how you want to do it uh, there, there's there's really no wrong way to set this what you're after in the long run is motion uh, with these rubber legs and that's what you get so however many you want to put on there however you want to set them um, is entirely up to you so like I was saying with these smaller ones on the more of the squala or whatever uh, smaller stone you're trying to imitate I keep these just with the two sets right there um, on the bigger ones I'll go three sometimes four sets depending on what I'm after and how much motion and everything but I don't like the ones going out the front so I keep them just like that um, pretty simple uh, trim these down on the back slightly one and two 
There we go. Really simple Pat's rubber leg. Um, like I said, dang, the phone's ringing, distracting me a little bit there. Um, but like I was saying, the bigger flies that I tie, the bigger imitations, the more legs that I'll put on there. This is a smaller one, so I'll go with just the two sets and then the one out the back. But if you want the one out the front, have it. It'll give you a little bit more motion. But if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. Thanks, as always, for watching, and we'll catch you on the next fly.